All right, traders, welcome back to another Relentless Recap. As you guys are tuning in, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. And if you're a new viewer, consider subscribing to the channel. Before we jump into it, a quick disclaimer. All right, guys, a quick disclaimer. Remember that day trading, of course, is risky. There's a lot of people out there that are having a hard time. So if you're new to the market or if you're not consistent as of yet, it's best to trade in a simulator or at the very least use risk money, right? Risk money is money that if you lose it all, it does not affect your livelihood or your lifestyle, all right? The simulator is paper trading. That's where you can trade the live market with artificial currency to build experience, build confidence, and become competent, all right? So there are ways to approach the market where the exposure is lower and limited, all right? Remember, throughout the trading days, to not copy trade. Copy trading is the worst thing you can do. Whether it's me, somebody else, you know, you have to understand how to trade. You have to understand how to, you know, recognize the patterns for yourself and understand where to buy and where to sell. All right. Remember that I do not invest money for my subscribers. Lastly, I do not invest money for my subscribers. Be careful down in the YouTube comment section. A lot of spam, a lot of scammers. I will never ask you to contact me using Telegram, WhatsApp. I, I will never talk about mirror trading, options trading for my subscribers. So be very careful about that type of stuff. And watch out for fake accounts in Discord and on other social medias, TikTok, Instagram. A lot of people are creating fake accounts and are trying to message the followers pretending to be me. Guys, do not get yourself scam. All right. So with that being said, let's jump into it. So today was another beautiful day as always. All right. We had a couple of stocks that we looked at. Our final PL on the day, we ended up 500. Most of that coming from VIEW, where we did about 677. And then a small gain on SIGA, red on TUP, UFAB, and IFBD. A little tricky on those uh, cheaper stocks today. Guys, if you are interested in learning how to trade, if you want to understand where to buy, where to sell, and get a better grasp on you know level two right level two of course is this screen here right these these beautiful this beautiful instrument with the green red yellow blue pink lines going across if you want to understand how i utilize this along with the charting to determine buying and selling points be sure to check out the course all right the course merciless markets university let me pull it up here for those of you who might not be familiar this is the day trading course that I have. Uh, you guys can become a member today and, you know, have two six-figure traders, all right? Be, be able to work, you know, and learn and grow and, you know, potentially become successful, all right? So, you know, there's two options, yearly, aka gold, or monthly, aka silver, or excuse me, uh, quarterly more so quarterly every three months right aka silver uh, where you guys can have access to the full course trading lectures weekly q a's live trading archives from marcelo myself a daily watch list and trade plan low latency streaming and of course the chat room access right you guys can become lifetime members of the relentless trading chat room you'll have uh the inner circle chat for mmu students and of course one-on-one -on -one mentorships, all right? So check it out. You can still use coupon code INDEPENDENCE, right? Coupon code INDEPENDENCE in honor of 4th of July. We're still in July. Very long month, 31 days. In fact, last day, let's check. The last day of this month will be on Monday. So we still have a few more days, right? We still have one more day to trade and we have a full weekend to study up. So on Monday, and look at look at my Mondays here. I've been studying on the weekends. So guess what? Monday, we can already expect another big green day. All right. So check out MMU and let's jump into some of the patterns that I uh, traded today. Right. So VIEW, you know, initially this thing here, I, I didn't see it super early. Right. I, I was trading one of the cheaper stocks. You guys know when I'm dialed in, I'm really focused, not looking at the scans, but you know, it's coming down and every time it gets to VWAP, it seems to be pushing up. Comes down to VWAP, this white line pushes up. 
thumbs down the feet off again and what do you know pushes up but this time it takes off over the high of day levels and it rips up and it goes into a circuit breaker halt of course when stocks are going up too fast too quickly they get frozen essentially by the exchange you know the sec wants to know what's going on why is the stock going up so much and more importantly it's a safety precaution because when a stock also drops down too fast too quickly the same thing will happen and it's really and truly to prevent a crash a flash crash right so you don't want to wake up the next day and the market is at zero so this is in place uh you know there are different types of halts and this in particular is a volatility halt all right so they last five or ten minutes it is important to know that the entire stock market can be halted and that can last for an entire day or maybe more depending on the particular halt code right so you guys can research this stuff if you're not an mmu you can definitely research it in mmu we do have some chapters going over uh some more details about the halts so the stock is halted up right and it's paused for five minutes it resumes sideways and immediately flushes down into another halt and so this is why holding into a halt can sometimes be risky for me personally i don't like to do it unless i have a good cost basis a good entry so let's say i bought the stock right here and it just happened to go all the way up and then it gets halted then for me i might say hey you know what maybe i can sell half hold half or if i'm holding the entire thing i know my risk is somewhat lower because there's distance in between where i am and the market price which is all the way up here right my entry point my cost basis so this resumes lower and then rips back up and at this point i'm like man i don't know this thing just seems so risky there's a big spread right so the spread is of course the difference between the bid and the ask price so if we we're to come back up on the other screen you guys will get a better look at this this is the spread here so if we pull up the stock v okay it's, let's see pull it up over here so right now in after hours we have 1405 by 1470 that's a huge spread and in comparison stock ifbd is currently at 108 by 109 so there's you know a, a one penny of a spread and what that means is that if you are buying and selling you can buy with you know limited risk knowing that if i hit the buy button i will be in between 108 and 109 and so when you have a thesis when you have a plan a trade idea hey i think this stock should go from 109 to let's say 120 i'm looking for this thing to go up 10 cents when you in when you're in and you know you're in at, at the exact price that that you want it makes things a little easier to manage risk because then you can say hey you know what based off of the charting based off of how everything is looking i think if the stock comes down by x amount it's not looking good to continue through for my hypothesis so it allows you to have a good risk and you know you can look for your potential reward because you know we are risk first we got to make sure the stocks are not going to fail because the stocks can drop down but when there's a stock like view if you use a market order there's a chance you can be in anywhere from 405 all the way to 470 oh excuse me 14 right 1405 and 1470 so you know i primarily use market orders i can use limit orders i can say hey i want to be in at 10 and if it does not come down do not get me in but sometimes the limit orders can be tricky because if there are no people trying to sell where i'm trying to buy i cannot get a fill right someone needs to be selling their shares to me you know hence they call it stock exchange right we're exchanging shares so you know when i'm trading this stock it got pretty dicey as you know the the patterns that i started to look for you know started to unfold so it pulls back and then right here we start to curl back up and this is where i got involved all the way till 10 30 so i missed out a bulk of the move let's take a look at some of the live video so i'm not going to show too much of this because of course you know it's primarily for the people who are involved in the classes 
Uh, and in fact, I, I did check out Marcelo's recap. He also traded this stock. So if you guys want to see a different perspective in terms of, you know, what you can do if you're willing to use slightly more share size. So before, right before I, uh, before I do it, let me quickly pull up the, um, the course again and show you guys Marcelo's channel. Marcelo, you know, essentially used five to 10 times the size that I was using here and was able to make five to 10 times the gain. All right. So be sure to check out this recap right here. If you guys are interested in seeing someone trading this exact stock with bigger size. And of course, as mentioned, Marcelo is the other mentor here at MMU. So if you come down to this last chapter, you know, here are the archives from today. 500 bucks on, on VIEW, low risk trades, and Marcelo some higher risk trades, $5,000, right? So you get have, you guys get to get two perspectives. So let's take a look at some of the lower risk trades I took, you know, smaller share size to mitigate the risk for me, taking it slow with the big spreads. Let's take a look. So I'm going to end up getting a beautiful uh, pullback. Hold on, let's uh, mute the volume. So the stock is going to come down and I'm going to recognize that we started to crawl back up very nicely. So there's a small bottoming wick and this thing starts to push back up. So I realized that short sellers are getting trapped because we had a rejection candle at the highs. A lot of people are aggressive to the short side because they believe we're going to break down below VWAP. But once we bounce back up here because buyers are still holding, I decide, you know what? Hey, I'm going to start to get involved. And you can see I start off with as little as 100 shares. So, you know, if, you, if you're if you wondering, hey, is it possible to potentially be able to make money with smaller size? Can I make a few hundred dollars with smaller share size? Guys, the answer is yes. But you have to understand where you're buying and where you're selling. So for me... I'm jumping in here because the stock is on an incline and I realize short sellers are now covering. So they have to buy back the shares that they, you know, uh, borrowed. All right. So when you're going short, when you're buying it, when you're buying the stock, hoping for it to go down, when the stock starts to go back up, you have to buy back the shares. Right. It's a bit of a weird science for those of you who might be newer to the markets. But yeah, so, you know, we're picking up volume here. We're going up and now we're starting to get a bit of a high of day push. So we get a couple of trades with some small size. I break the ice. I said, hey, you know what? This thing is looking pretty decent. And so I jump up now to 300 shares and I'm going to continue to look for a high of day breakout. And so look at how crazy that trade right there was. So I'm looking for a break of 18 here. I'm long at 17.71. And we're going to get the break through the level. And we're right up above 18, so I'm selling over the whole dollar. And we're now trying to get halted up again at 18.17. So this stock was absolutely moving. And with that small share size, 100 shares, 300 shares, we've managed to get ourselves up 250 bucks in just a few minutes. So, you know, it can be done. We don't guarantee anyone success because at the end of the day you know we as the individual are the variables we still have to study we still have to put in the work we still have to work hard you know a lot of the times you can go to class and not put in the work not pay attention so you know this is why i'm showing this stuff here for those of you who are serious traders right a lot of people already clicked off the video the first two minutes you know they don't care about watching this stuff so for the people who are serious right so we right now we're in the phase of you know hey are we going to get this new high if not are we going to need a pullback so i start to put out some orders a little lower down trying to get a low fill and you know i'm essentially watching at the low of the last candle and i'm trying to watch to see if we can eventually get a three bar play so hey the low of the last candle is 84 i'm long at 97 how well can this curl up and push higher so there's 1745 on the ask right so this thing is you know it's moving up a little bit there's 65 there's 82 it's pushing up nicely but right here i'm not selling immediately because i'm trying to look for a bigger push and there's there we go the bits get up there to 50 and guys 
that right there was a 60 cent trade and the three bar play looks like it might just happen and so we might get a new high of day here you know eventually so again when you check out marcelo's channel pay attention to how he's utilizing these same these similar similar trades with more size that way you guys can see that there's potential here to make money right we're not again it's not guaranteed because you, you still have to learn how to you know where to buy you still have to gain the experience the screen time the intuition but you know we're here to show you that at least it is possible all right and there's different ways to do it so i i i, I feel like okay this thing is starting to move fairly well i'm going to put a little bit more size now behind it so you can see how i'm slowly gra gradually sizing up and this is how i approach the market when you know things are a little slower and I want some confirmation to make sure that the trades that we're looking at are good trades, right? So right here, this is a little bit more of an aggressive entry for me. You know, it's the same trade. It's still the same sequence of the trade. If I didn't sell, I could still potentially be holding because the stock has not come down below where I got long. So right here, I'm still watching at this as a healthy trade. So I'm going to watch and if we can hold above 20, I'm going to look to hold. If not, I'm going to keep it tight. And I'm going to look to get in, uh, you know, towards these lows to see what the stock wants to do. So there's a bid, 3,000 shares at 40. I didn't jump in because there's a bit of a spread. So again, the spread does make it a little tricky at times. But I'm watching here to see if this thing wants to take off. So I'm being patient, waiting. What will it be? We do have a bit of a false breakout candle here for the three-bar play. So I'm being patient. I'm being patient. And after this trade, I'm going to take it off because, again, I'm already showing too much. We give away a lot of stuff here for free. It's coming down. Oh, it's still holding 25 area. So I'm still being patient here. Are we going to break down or are we going to hold up? Which one is it going to be? Tight spread here, 25 by 26. This is as tight of a spread as, as you'll ever see. And then it does end up coming down. But you can see I'm in at 17 and not quite at 82. So I'm still in a little high against the spread. So right here, you know, can we see the curl back up? There's 53, you know, 54. Can we continue to push here? Can we see something? After this trade, we'll shut it down. So I'm, I'm going to be patient here. If it breaks down, I'll take a loss of 50 cents. I'll lose 250. But I'm going to give the stock a chance because it seems to be holding up. And so right here, I decided to, to use some limit orders. So there we go. I'm all out. And so again, from 17, right? So I sold the first position at 50, which is about, uh, you know, yeah, I sold the first position about at, at about 50, which is about a 50 cent trade. And I'm going to sell the other position here at 75 on the ask, which is going to be about a 75 cent trade. So there we go. We're filled as it pushes up to 85, 90. And right here, I got aggressive. Right here, the pastor said it's game time. Right here, I thought the stock was about to rip to 1850 and then 19. So I got aggressive. And this, you guys can see that I still am not as confident as I need to be at the lows with size. I'm far more confident in breakout trades with share size because this is the same stock. It's mental, right? This is the same exact stock. In fact, it's even a higher price now, but I'm so much more confident to buy 1500 shares, which is three times the original position I took down at 17 because I have good reasons to believe this should go to 19 right here. And it's not going to happen, but I'm going to keep my stop tight. This was a risky trade. But right here, again, I felt very good about the move. So, boom, there's some green hitting the tape. Well, actually, hold on, let's go back. So, I'm all out, and buying starts to come in. So, I'm like, okay, can we break through 18? Green hitting the tape right there as I'm long. And where is it? It doesn't happen. So, I'm like, okay, let's take the loss. We got a decent fill coming out, and we take about a $200 loss right there. But these are the good trades that I like. You know, if we break out, we can definitely get to see, you know, a big gain. But, you know, it even goes to show for me, I'm still working, right? You know, 
the goal is to take this type of size and be comfortable with it in every single trade, right? Once we start to connect earlier, because, you know, if we do the math, you know, 1500, I think the last trade we made like 50 cents. And then after that, we made another like 50 cents on half and then another 75 cents on the other half, you know, it, it, it adds up quickly, right? And so with the small size, you know, before this trade really happens with the small size, you know, we're at 491 and then we exit right there with 798. So from 100 shares to then 300 to then 500, how many cents have we already made to this point? You know, let's say our average share size probably was 300 shares, right? It means we've already made about $2 plus a share. So it's the same concept if you're using bigger size. You know, at 1,500 shares, you know, it's a little bit more exponential you'll probably be up around 3,500 somewhere there with the same trades with that type of size. So again, you know, feel free guys to check out Marcelo's channel as well at Mighty Stocks. Uh, you guys can find him on the course website or just on YouTube, depending on where you are. That being said, it's been a good recap. It's been your favorite YouTuber, Relentless. And I am, of course, signing out.